Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. All right. Um, thank you guys for sticking around. We're the second to last to go. I appreciate you staying here. Um, in a moment, I'm going to uh, introduce my team or let them introduce themselves. But I want to give a little bit of narrative on what we are working on with our design challenge, which is all too common in our district. And actually, before starting that, I want to say it's amazing the projects we've seen already and what we do for such tidbits of money. I mean, this is a great experience, don't get me wrong. The work that we do for such little money is ridiculous. And it's, it's I mean, the causes are all wonderful. And so I, I commend everybody that's here that's putting in their time and going for this. Uh, and it's well deserved. Uh, so we're seeking to create a safe and supportive culture of excellence within our African-American third grade student population through strengthening our partnerships with our parents, teachers, staff, and community. It's something we're missing. This is my second year at Hartman Milk as principal. Previous to this, I was, I was elsewhere for um, about eight years. And uh, there was a lot of divide in the community throughout the time of the last probably decade since one of the principals left a long time ago. And we have a lot of work to do specifically with one of our groups of students uh, that needs a lot of love and a lot of extra support. So we're saying countering the narrative, educating our black boys for success. Um, again, I'm Ron Machado. I'm going to let my team introduce themselves. Should we say we have first grade teachers? Tisha Jenkins, uh, dual role as paraprofessional in the third grade. David Lubinsky, I'm a parent of the public teacher. Glenn Castro, student advisor. Lance Von Care, I'm a parent and a coach. I'm Lorenzo Buchanan, I'm an RSP. Yeah, no. My notes aren't showing up on here. So our original How Might We question started out as how might we create an emotionally safe environment in our third grade class so that all students are feeling safe and secure for learning. One of the things we noticed with, that we talked about um, when we got together in our first design team meeting was third grade kept coming up. Third grade is where um, we have a huge spike in referrals and it's a lot of our African American boys that are acting out. We're doing a lot of work within the classrooms and the teachers and we have some very veteran teacher, a veteran teacher and a new teacher that need a lot of support. It's only two classrooms, um, yet we are seeing about 95% of our referrals come from those two classrooms, and uh, a majority, a large majority of those, of those referrals are from our African American boys. And so this kept coming up in our conversation about um, within our first design team meeting. Um, through the design process, um, some of the things we did to discover more information, we did a, a <coughs> survey for our third grade boys, or for the whole class, third grade classes. We wanted to discover, we wanted to look at how safe our students felt based on what was happening in the classroom and trying to discover if it was a cause that was coming from our teachers, our students, if there was unsafety in the classroom or feelings of unsafety in the classroom. Where was that coming from? And if there were feelings of safety coming from the classroom, where was that coming from? Um, our student advisor shadowed students. Uh, Landon Dickey was our, our facilitator. He um, was uh, he observed some classrooms. We had a teacher observe. I'm sorry, a parent observed some classrooms, and we reviewed videos and did some online research um, within a short amount of time that we had. Um, some of the insights we came up with were. Uh, we noticed that within some of our staff that our African-American male students reacted more appropriately, had a better rapport with a lot of our African-American staff, and specifically the African-American males that came onto campus. Um, and we thought, how can we transfer that? How can, we're doing a lot of work within the capacity of our teachers, but we're seeing a different interaction culturally um, within the group. And we thought to ourselves, um, how might we increase student access to staff and educators of color that can relate their experiences during class time and throughout the school day and thus transfer that to the rest of the staff? Another insight was that um, educators and staff have a misunderstanding of culturally responsive pedagogy. They're missing the proactive piece of relationship building. And we were doing a lot of reaction. Uh, another insight, uh, male African American students are trying to uphold cultural expectations for masculine identity building. And we thought, how might we provide our African American male students with a multifaceted understanding of masculinity within our school setting, specifically within third grade. So we revised our 
how might we question into how might we create a culturally responsive classroom where educators have meaningful relationships with their students, parents, or core partners in their child's learning, and students learn in an environment that is safe socially, emotionally, and physically. Um, so based on our reframing of our question, we came up with near-term and long-term goals. And for the near term, we hope to decrease behavioral referrals for our African-American boys, increase Fontes and Pinnell reading scores for these students. We'd like to see them all get to a level K by the end of the year. Um, and we want to see these students enjoying learning, participating, and engaging in class in tandem with increased parent involvement. And in the long term, we want our students to see school as an integral part of promoting equity and civil rights. And we want them to build stronger relationships. And we want our students to build stronger interpersonal skills in order to positively influence and collaborate with each other. Um, you go back. So regarding vision uh, 2025, this vision sees our students growing up to be successful graduates, um, engaging in the global market while maintaining a strong sense of self and identity. And we feel that our vision for this project is in alignment with that. Um, so if we've designed these outcomes, we must be able to define and measure how they're going to be successful. So our quantitative measures are student behavior referrals, student survey on self-efficacy and satisfaction, staff survey, and <coughs> academic achievement through the Fontes and Pinal schools. And our qualitative measures will be student and parent testimonials about in-school and class experiences and more parent involvement. All right, so this is, um, we decided to portray our solution design <coughs> as an illustration. It's a brief comic. Um, wherein we see <coughs> wraparound services and multi-levels of support for our African-American students. Um, we want to remove the one-size-fits-all model and address individual needs with culturally appropriate responses. This means really thinking differently about our human capital and drawing in community-based organizations, parents, peer mentors in order for our students to feel heard, empowered, and successful. Um, a positive example of this kind of innovation, uh, innovative program uh, occurred over the summer at Milk. We joined with Urban Ed to provide academic support and social emotional learning for students. And we feel that that was a kind of an incubator for the program we hope to see implemented with the help of this grant. So we have a strategy that's built on three parts. The first part is about building trust, and that's about bringing the CBO in to help uh, kind of understand the needs of the students and the parents and the staff, and putting everybody together in a way to kind of understand what's going on. The second part is about building the community within the classroom, having those uh, leaders coming in with uh, partners and teaching and being in the classroom as also kind of making those relationships in and around the classroom as well as with uh, the families of the, of the students. And then lastly is about building leadership, which is about bringing in uh, uh, black, student, uh, black student union uh, kids from uh, Mission High School and having them integrated into the process. So we have a, CB, a CBO who's helping us integrate these uh, students so that we can have more of a peer leadership relationship with them. So the first part, building trust. The plan is to hire, uh, um, as we mentioned, hire a CBO to help work on these wraparound services um, and academic coaching, office hours, just being there and understanding and getting a part of it. The resources we're going to need, we're going to need some office space, office hours, contracts, phones, communication, CBO partners, and success measures are student and parent surveys and report current, hopefully improvements. Next, the plan for, uh, yes, uh, basically success measures, 
for this part, decreased referrals, assignment, completion, surveys, incentives, and point system. And then lastly, uh, for this one would be one-on-one -on -one student mentors with this with the uh, Mission High School kids and uh, more surveys with parents and staff. So what we're looking to do is find with our continue, we're looking for funding to continue our partnership with our CBO, with uh, Urban Ed Academy. And actually we have the person in place that we're already funding through a unique grant that we have from someone else um, for a limited amount of funding, a limited, <coughs> limited amount of time. And we're hoping to increase that partnership so that we're not just getting two hours a day, two and a half hours a day. We want to make it seven hours a day, which we will do regardless of this grant or not, because it's, we need this for our boys. We are dealing with an issue that everybody's dealing with at all levels for the most part, but we're trying to get a way of um, addressing this issue and knowing that as a small school with very limited outside classroom support, we need to pull in help to do, it, do this. Um, and so we want to increase our capacity by relying on our community-based organizations that we already have and build it in such a way that we can continue receiving funding and reach out for different funding sources um, to make this sustainable for year to year. So that our third grade boys right now are needing a lot of love. We don't have the capacity right now. We have the capacity, we don't have the resources to give them so We want to give, that, give them that love and what they need so that they don't go on to the other high schools and middle schools with those challenges that they don't deserve. They've been left behind and we need to get them caught. <coughs> Mission High School, certainly not least, but uh, <laughs> in this